Hi everybody, uh, welcome to a different kind of video. I, I know this isn't my typical kind of video. I know I say that every time I don't do a typical video. Um, and I'm working really hard on a new video. Um, but I got distracted while making the new video because I was, you know, looking on Twitter and stuff and it hit me before I even realized that, holy shit, it's E3. Um, and I love E3. I know it's hyper consumerist and, you know, it's literally just companies advertising st there's all their stuff to you all at once, but I can't help it. I love it. Um, it, it is truly like Christmas for gamers and for gamers and it made me think about all the great times that i've had watching e3 even live or just clips after the fact and i really wanted to do a quick jog down memory lane so i queued up a bunch of clips from e3s and i just thought it'd be fun to revisit those talk over them react re-react some of these clips i've seen before some are relatively new you got you know conference clips trailers reactions to trailers, demos, um, and just general E3 moments that I think, these aren't necessarily like the premiere E3 moments, but these are E3 moments that speak to me. And of course I do have some essential moments, but otherwise I think it's just gonna be a good time. I think um, it's fun to get hyped like this before E3 and to remember why you love it to begin with, even if this year it's not exactly um, in its, original format or original glory so first off we have my name is reggie i'm about kicking ass i'm about taking names and we're about making games <laughs> Ugh, advertisement so like that was reggie's first time on screen that was his that was his introduction e3 2004 i believe it was which um as we'll see um, from a few other clips in this. That was a pretty legendary Nintendo conference. But yeah, infamous clip. Doesn't really need my take on it. But here's one that, that was the introduction. This one's the mood setter. Reggie, that was, you know, a good meme, but this is like, this is get ready for E3 shit right here. Okay, so like, buckle up. Kevin Butler, everybody. Uh, you know, listen, I'm sorry about this, but uh, as long as I'm here, do you mind if I get something off my chest? I, I actually want to pause real quick. I actually, um, I've been writing a script about Kevin Butler. I really want to make a video about Kevin Butler, but I don't want to make it unless I can interview the real Kevin Butler, the actor who played Kevin Butler. I really want to get him for an interview. So if anyone watching this can make that happen, <laughs> that'd be pretty sweet. So I would love to sit down with him and talk to him for a video i'll be quick because what a lightning era of advertising for playstation just electric <laughs> i haven't seen this clip in forever so am i crazy or did i just see a hundred french acrobats prancing around an arena the other night I think that might have been a nod to Ubisoft. I hear there was a sale on blue ponchos. <laughs> Xbox but poncho seriously. year. But uh, this was actually used to advertise PlayStation really Move. That was the whole point of this. It's like, well, if this guy can't sell it, the then game. no one can. Who's with me? But it was still, this is still a very fun moment in the history of E3 in the context See, of like I the console wars as well. Gaming. Okay. Not exactly a pivotal moment, but just a fun moment. I love you too. I love walk-off homers and headshots. I love drifting a turn at 100 miles an hour. In oh, baby. The 600-foot-tall Greek god who may or may not be your father. <laughs> Gaming is having a ridiculously huge TV in a tiny one-room apartment. <laughs> Everyone in the room felt that. Staying up till 3 a.m. to earn a trophy, that isn't real. Yeah. But is. But is. <laughs> and it's girls who know that the way to a man's heart is through a melee attack. <laughs> what was that? I love gaming. 
And I know you love it too. That's why you're here. And why millions of people are pretending to work while they watch this at their desk. It's all, you know, it's all scripted and whatever, but it's still, it feels authentic. So every person on this group Even though it's like, this is a guy who a probably doesn't play that many games, and this is a script written by PlayStation's writing team, it's still just such a fun, authentic, in air quotes, moment, because it feels authentic, it feels genuine, and because this guy's just a great actor, and playing a great character. Taste of the PS3 sugar. Families, kids, grandparents, and you hardcore guys, I'm talking about you. Don't hate on them. Don't, don't do it. Look at it this way. If you've got an awesome girlfriend, and then someone else gets an awesome girlfriend, you know who wins? Everyone. <laughs> your mom can make your mom jokes after she takes you to school. Yeah, and see, this is, just a, this is just an ad for PlayStation Move, but... It and a applies to every, a lot of make other a things. Boy in Boston question his own manhood. <laughs> when we said the PS3 only does everything, we meant it. And the move. Oh my God! The music. The move brings a whole lot more everything to the table. Yeah, it sucks that because this is just one big ad for PlayStation Move, but. Gamer. Motion gamers, sitting gamers, everyone. And though we may pledge fanboy allegiances to different flags, deep down inside we all serve one master, one king. And his name is Gaming. Forever may he reign! <laughs> it's so stupid, but it's so good at the same time. Very dumb, very fun. That's E3, baby. Okay, so... I'm getting hit with another ad. The next video is a demo, and it's a bit weird. It's not something you might think of when you think of, like, hype E3 demos. But this was one that hit at a very particular point in time that made me feel... It, it was, like, one of the first times I truly felt that E3 magic. It was one of my first times watching E3 live and seeing a new game being played in front of me and you know feeling that unique summer e3 gaming hype so uh yeah let's watch that yeah siege of shanghai demo all right guys there's quite a few people watching oh yeah we got the fake gamer let's talk too up. let's do this i'm pumped <laughs> Oh my god. Fake gamer talk, man. Will we see fake gamer talk this E3? That is the question. But yeah, just seeing this like bird's eye view kind of of like the action below. And like, yeah, it's all scripted and fake and everyone has god mode on who needs it. And, you know, they rehearse this like 20 times. I mean, maybe, maybe not 20 times, but. Roger, we're on it. They have a script and everything. But it's just so fun, like, okay, we're getting a new Battlefield game. You got the excitement of E3, awesome. it's on the stage. You're seeing the footage for the very first time. It's just exciting. And seeing, yeah, the destruction. I know the resolution isn't doing any favors, but like, it's crazy that a game that felt so realistic and new at the time um, feels kind of dated. And like looks kind of old. This is a 2013 game. Almost eight years old. Oh, this is great. Alex, come down here and take out the support pillar. I got C4. No. Try this. Nice. Yeah, see. Getting live reactions. Nicely done. That was just cool. Like no one had ever really seen destruction like that, where like a street kind of like caves in like that. Even though. It's not dynamic, but it just feels large scale. I think that's why this demo was so exciting, is you could feel the scale. And it's like, come on, who doesn't want to just RP military dudes with the bros? 
Like, like just like. On it. Uh, that's a Tanger Delta Niner. Uh, copy. Reloading. Meh. Or something like that. In hindsight, this does feel like oddly slow. Let's get into the skyscraper. And following you. I don't know. It feels kind of basic, which is funny. Again, like it's funny how something that blew your mind at one point can you look back at it and it's just like. Yeah, it's, but maybe it's just because like I've played Battlefield Four. I know what the actual pacing of the matches are like, and it's not like this. Yeah, this is all set dressing. Like they're not even in the same match. Those dudes on the computer. <laughs> like no. Ah, oh, that pesky chopper. Good job. Uh oh, guys, you what feel was that, that rumbling? <laughs> uh oh, guys, you feel that rumbling? Looks like we have some tanks over here. They're trying to take this building down. Command, Man, if only someone here, had an iPad yeah, sure. in the audience. The heavy artillery. Here comes the missile firing. All right, I see it. Incoming. I have a hostile machine gunner just Commander mode was fun, but not really something that took off. Nice. Right on target. Thank you. Nice. Also spotted. <laughs> See, that's what I mean. It's like, who doesn't want to just, like, RP with the boys? Just, like, enemy spotted. That building is unstable. You better get out. Jump. Building's going down. It's <laughs> going down. But yeah, this shit was crazy. What the fuck? You can do that? All right, we can we can we can stop over right there. Next up, ooh, next up is a good one. It's a crowd reaction to uh, a big boy, a big big boy. That's getting ooh, I believe um, on June tenth, which is hopefully the day this video uploads. <laughs> um. A remaster of this game is coming out, so Long ago, yeah. This was insane. I remember watching this with friends and just being like, "I haven't even played the original game, and I know what the hell this is, and I can't believe they're doing it." And it's <laughs> you can just, oh shit! <laughs> You just the realization slowly settling in. I'm just like, this is what you think it is, and they won't see it for another five years. Yeah, that's that's electric. And then confirm. It's like, what a holy shit moment. And they lived up to the promise. It was an initial PS4 exclusive. Still a PlayStation exclusive. And it was awesome because the game was great too. It ended up, it ended up, it took a while, but you know, it got there and it was fun and it was good. Oh, this next one. Well, it's not really a classic, but it's a classic. I gotta be honest with the community. I gotta be honest, right? I play all of the Nintendo games. I suck at Smash. <laughs> this was at the Invitational but, in 2014. I, my opportunity or, I don't, Was it 2014? Yes, it was. With Smash on 3DS. Because now okay. I'm gonna play it on the go. I'm gonna be able to come back up next time and kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> No, like, this is, it had been a while, like,
Like, I know at the top of this, we watched a clip where he says, I'm all about kicking ass and taking names, but it, it had been a hot minute since we had heard Reggie swear. This is Mr. Nintendo. And so him just going like, hey, hey, you, you, you know, you, yeah, you. I'm going to kick your ass. Whoa. <laughs> that was a uh, very strange and very fun moment. Next, speaking of uh, strange moments, but this one's a feel-good moment. This one's um, a moment that was leaked before, um, after I get this fucking ad out of the way. It was leaked before. Um, I think it was like a power, an internal PowerPoint leaked. And people were like not into it at all. But then when they actually showed it on stage and people actually saw it and they saw the passion behind the people involved, they're like, you know what? I'll give it a shot. Hello, everyone. Ubisoft. And thank you. We've always wondered what could happen if our crazy rabbits were unleashed upon the world of Mario. They were always thinking of that, Today, guys. Like, Ten years ago, they were like, what if the world what if the crazy world of rabbits was unleashed with mario to talk, it is my great honor to welcome a very special guest someone i truly yeah admire. it was like no fucking way miyamoto-san himself with a gun apparently he was very adamant was like this game will not have guns blasters are okay though Just a kind of a crazy moment of like, Nintendo typically, Nintendo didn't do this. They didn't typically, you, you know, involve themselves with the so the petty affairs today. of these little third party so what, publishers. What oh. you? Well, and so this was kind of a sign that like, they were dead serious. Right side replica of one of the weapons from this game. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> see what I mean about like you could tell like when you see an actor on stage with a non-actor not that Miyamoto or Bill Trennan are actors but it's like but yeah the, again this it's kind of just like it was very it's it's it was surreal seeing Nintendo the big dog of Nintendo Miyamoto-san himself involving himself with a third-party company like this no. And like having fun with it, and taking it seriously, having fun and taking it seriously. You see in Ghost Recon. <laughs> yeah, very different weapons for cute. very different worlds. Uh, this one is, I think, very. You'll put Mario in, in Ghost uh, Recon, cowards. Rabbit. So, should do well. A little awkward here. <laughs> should do well. So when I met uh, Davide San. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's a feel-good moment. I believe it was a studio in Milan or some Italian studio that worked on it. And yeah, the passion was so real and authentic. Like that's a man who got to work with his hero. And like everyone, when it cut to him and, you know, you can see he's got tears in his eyes, you know, whatever. Everyone understands. Everyone understood what that would feel like to not just have your hero personally recognize you, but just have the chance to work with them in general. That's such a crazy feeling and such an authentic and genuine moment that people really connected with. And a very rare moment of genuine humanity in, a, 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 in an event that's literally just advertising advertisers throwing their shit at you. Next up is a, a really, it's a trailer and it's a... It's spicy. Fingers crossed we get the sequel shown this year. Or this E3. I think we'll see it at by at some point this year, but E3 specifically. Funny thing about this trailer, only uploaded in 720p. It was 2016. I don't know why Nintendo... Their videos uploaded in like 2012 that were 1080p. But yeah, this was just like... No one really knew what to expect from this game. People knew, people saw, there was a little bit of footage, I believe, from the Game Awards a few months prior. So people had an idea that it was a more open-ended experience. But otherwise, people really had no clue. 
And so just seeing this, the tone right here, just somber, natural, just landscapes. Wake up, Link. And the music, yeah. Just, ah. We're slowing it down a little bit. Like, what a just a nice, slow change of pace. It's like video game meditation. And the music. Just, god damn. And the scale of just being like, you can go anywhere. Oh, and this? Like, environmental puzzle solving. Like, real, like, natural puzzles. Like, this game, this trailer established a promise that everyone understood and knew it could fulfill. It was very clear what it was trying to do, and it was so exciting. Like, what an adventure. From forests to deserts to the snowy wilds. It's so cool looking back on this trailer, too, because, like, 100% of this is in the main game. Is in the game we played. We experienced this trailer when we played the game. Like, this game made a promise that it kept. Or this trailer made a promise that it, the game kept. And it's so cool. Oh, and this was the title reveal. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, this whole time, like, what's it going to be called? And then just have that slow... Breath of, breath of the Breath of the Wild. And of course, for it took a long time to say Breath of the Wild instead of Breath of the Wind or, you know, like, um, or Call of the Wild. But yeah, what an amazing trailer and what a beautiful moment that I distinctly remember. Like, I think a lot of people remember where they were when they first saw this trailer and saw this title reveal. It's such a beautiful moment that I know isn't a specific, like, it's an E3 trailer, but it's not like an E3 moment, but it's still a moment that you know. Because I believe, was this the only thing? I believe E3 2016 was the year where we're just doing Breath of the Wild. We're just doing Zelda. You know, we are just showing the trailer and we're doing a treehouse and you show up at E3 and you play the demo. That's literally our entire presence at E3 this year. That was crazy. And it showed just how committed they were to this game and like how much they knew this game was special. So, yeah, absolutely legendary moment. Pun intended. Oh, this next one. I know I say this literally every time. I made the damn playlist. I know what's next, but it's still every time I see it, I go, oh, um, this one's a combination of uh, on stage and a trailer. And it's uh. It was a moment that we knew there was something being cooked up. We didn't think it would be revealed so soon. So with that. Please welcome to the stage, Andrew House. E3 2016, very legendary year for PlayStation. The same E3 that I just said, where Nintendo just like, nope, we're just showing Breath of the Wild. This was Sony's E3. This is following God of War. This was showing Days Gone. Um, Detroit Become Human. Thank you very much, everyone. It was a big, big M prior to the announcement of Spider-Man. Our mission is to make PlayStation the best place to play for gamers. And later this year, they would announce The Last of Us Part Two. So, yeah, going in, we knew. A few months before this, Sony had just inked a deal with a very famous video game developer who had just left a very famous video game company to make an exclusive game for PS4. So it was like when that intro was like, holy shit, it, there's no way. It's so soon. The Mad Men. <laughs> the music in the stairs. Watch this. Kojima just ignores the stairs. He has rendered space and time obsolete. <laughs> and I believe it's been pointed this is the Mad Max Fury Road soundtrack so good 
This is his first public appearance since forming Kojima Productions. The new Koji Pro. And it's just the best thing you can possibly say. Hello? Hello, everyone. I'm back. Like, come on. Come on. Epic. Man, this is so crazy watching this after playing the game they're showing, remembering that when they announced it, no one had any clue what the hell was going on. It's insane. Oh shit, I'm gonna get flagged for this. Oh, maybe I can't show it. Maybe I can at least mute it. I just realized. Please low roar. But yeah, like, so I think I'm just going to cut through this relatively quickly. But yeah, the baby, that was a meme for a long time because it's like, what the hell is going on? Why is there a naked baby tied to a naked man? And then you get the reveal that it's Norman freaking Reedus because this was just following Kojima's firing from Konami as he was working on a new Silent Hill game with Norman Reedus. So the fact that he was working on a game continuing that relationship with Norman Reedus was a sign that's just like, they just like working together. I don't think many people thought this was going to be Silent Hills. I'm sure some people might have thought that. But I thought it was clear from the from the jump that it's like, they're just buds. They're just buds. But yeah, this just crazy trailer that nobody understood and still don't understand. A lot of people don't. Um, and this is actually kind of, isn't this a scene from Death Stranding? Like, this is a cutscene from the game. Um, there's a cutscene very similar to this in the actual game itself. It looks a little different because the graphics have changed in that time. Um, but yeah, I remember, like, uh, following his departure, Kojima just went on this, like, year-long, almost year-long worldwide vacation to different studios around PlayStation. And then he just hung out with Gorilla, and they're just like, hey, you want our new engine? And that's what this was made with, is the Horizon Zero Dawn engine. And that's, oh man, what a crazy, crazy, crazy moment that no one saw coming. Oh, and then we got um, a Hideo Kojima game at the end there, which is a nice, like, because Ko Konami struck that for Metal Gear Solid Five. It's like, it's tradition. Yeah, it's pretentious, but it's tradition. So, yeah. What a crazy, crazy moment that no one saw coming. Okay, so this next one was from the same E3, I believe, as the Kevin Butler clip. And is this one's a funny one uh, because they introduced a guest who uh, was not too fond of the PS3 toward the beginning of its life cycle. Our next guest has spent the better part of a decade developing some of the most critically acclaimed franchises. So this is a major really moment. To welcome the stage for the first time. Stand by for an important announcement. Yeah. From the it was like if this guy is showing up on Sony stage at E3. Deploying surprise. If this guy is showing up, then it must mean something special. Lord Gaben himself. Co-creator of Windows and Valve, but you know. <laughs> Hi, my name is Gabe Newell, and I work at Valve. <laughs> I, um, I work at Valve. It's like, yeah, buddy. I've been pretty outspoken in my comments about the current generation of game consoles. <laughs> I believe I, I forget what he said exactly, so I really but it was literally like it was scathing. <laughs> He's like, there is no reason to develop games for the PS3 or something like that. It was. Scathing. I'd like to thank everyone at Sony for their gracious hospitality and for not repeatedly punching me in the face. <laughs> if I seem a little nervous, it's because Kevin Butler was introduced to me backstage as the VP of sharpening things. They got jokes. Dude, the PlayStation writing team for E3 this year was... Transition. They were on fire. So entertainment is a product to entertainment as a service. It's about giving gamers a complete social connected experience oh yeah by adopting an open approach to these challenges this is a big announcement at the, the time PlayStation 3 is going to excel in this area 
So, I'm very pleased to announce that we'll be bringing Portal 2 to the PlayStation 3. That's not all, though. Like, that was news on its own. Like, oh shit, they're actually developing a game I'm for PS3. But Steam will be part of that experience. And I think that gamers will be delighted with features like Steam Cloud and automatic updates uh, that will make the PlayStation 3 version of Portal 2 the best version on any console. What was kind of missing from that was that, um, maybe he said and I just didn't pick it up, but like, like, PS3 players were going to be able to play the game with PC players. Like, that was huge. That was huge. So, yeah, that was a big, big moment for like Gabe Newell to come out and not only be like, hey, I know I'm being paid to say this, but I was wrong about the PS3. Also, Portal 2 is actually coming to PS3. Also, it's going to be better than the Xbox version because you'll be able to play with PC players. It was just like, holy shit. Like, that was nuts, so. So, I, I, I look back really fondly on that moment. That was a pretty major moment in the history of PlayStation to um, turn that around because the PS3 was kind of a PR nightmare. And then 2009, with the price drop and the redesign, and Kevin Butler, they really changed things around and really, like, they're in, that was kind of a sign that, like, they're changing for the better. Absolutely. And speaking of PlayStation... In 2009, um, here's a video, here's a demo of my second favorite game of all time, number two on my top 100. Oh, yeah. Oh, we can, we can skip the preamble. Here we go. I forget that this was the demo. I know I didn't watch this until after I played. I didn't know about I didn't really know about E3 when I bought this game. I just played the damn games. Apologies for the flashing cameras. Holy shit! <laughs> See, I miss this era of gaming when shit like this was like an applause worthy, and now it's expected. But that's what this game was. It was just like, holy shit, how is how are they even doing this? Man, the cameras are going nuts. You have to also remember E3 for a long time was a press event. Like capital P press event. Like newspapers. <laughs> you know. Magazines. Internet media was growing, but it wasn't like such a constant as it is today. Holy shit. That's still so cool. And hearing the audience go, oh! <laughs> you can just hear people go, whoa! <laughs> it's like, hey, that's how I felt when I played it. Oh, that's a nice, nice little moment. The cover swap there. Is that Evan Wells playing? I don't know. Oh, that's the music. I was like, someone bring a cat? <laughs> oh, and this was nuts. What's about to happen? It, it was, it's a crap pleaser for sure. Grab the ammo, man. Yeah. Like you're in an active, physically moving object. I don't know how they did this. Like this was something game developers looked at and went, what the fuck? Just as much as fans. Yeah. Oh, man. 
and that's not even the most that's not even like the best part of the game that's not even like the most holy shit how are they doing this moment of the game but i understand that they probably wanted to keep the train segment a, a secret so but yeah what an awesome oh next up we got legendary moment is do a uh, what we call a body check on somebody. Had to do it. So today, I think we'll do it with Reggie. Hi. My you body, ready, Reggie? my body is ready. Hi. He came ready with that line because my body, my body is like he had to. He stopped and waited until yeah. it was like okay, clear. I am going to say my body is ready. So uh, you wear. I want everyone to hear me say clothing. my body is ready. I want. Everyone to hear me. I want everyone to hear me say, "My body is ready." So <laughs> that was such a deliberate, a deliberate um, statement. Oh, next up, we got a trailer. Yeah, boys. It's European, so we got to have the rating. And oh, my my camera covers it anyway. Cool. So this was the preface with just like, let's just introduce all of the new fighter all let's just have let's show the whole cast in one trailer all right you know whatever let's just do it because you know it'd be fun unbeknownst to us they were doing that for a very specific reason that was to demonstrate that literally every character that had ever been in a smash bros game is going to be in this game and it was also a nice look at all their redesigns like link being breath of the wild link was nice beloved characters because like a lot of people it's like oh we're gonna see who got because going in it's like oh let's we're gonna see who's getting cut and who's not getting cut and no one was cut <laughs> in fact cut characters were added like what a fun way of demonstrating to your audience that this is the ultimate package pun intended This was E3 2018, yeah, the summer before the game came out in December. This was the big blowout. This was kind of the Breath of the Wild of 2018. We're just like, hey, we're going to have other games shown here, but, like, half of this thing is just going to be Smash Bros., okay? And then, this is the moment. It's like, holy shit, what? They actually got Snake? What an electric moment, literally, because stealth camera. Oh, and the theme? Oh, yeah, and they introduced the theme song of this game with this trailer, too. Mmm. Like, not every character here is a banger, but it was just nice knowing that no one had been cut. Yeah, Wolf was awesome. Only in Brawl until Ultimate, which is crazy. And they also, yeah, remixed a lot of existing characters, too. And it was the title reveal, Ultimate. Which was just like, yep, this is the Ultimate Smash Bros. Everyone is here. Is this going to have the uh, portrait? Oh, fuck. It didn't have the giant, like, psh, like, giant landscape portrait of all the characters. That sucks. But whatever awesome trailer such a fun memory of learning that everyone was going to be in smash ultimate okay next up we have proud reaction to a trailer for a game people didn't know the title of until the very end it was turns out it's part of a franchise they already knew and loved what how can that be Legendary Easy Allies reaction to this as well. Oh, another chance to win a PS5? I already have one. Sorry about that. But yeah, it was just like first person horror. And this is after Silent Hills was canceled. So it was just like, is this Silent Hills? Is this some developer just trying to channel the spirit of Silent Hills? I don't know. I don't know. Also, this was like during their VR. This is either during their VR segment or at the tail end of their VR segment at E3 2016. Yeah, this was 2016 as well. Damn, what a good E3. This is Sony E3 2016. That camera crane. 
I can imagine sitting in the audience just like, get, the, get, get, get out of the way. And before this, I believe the E3 prior, there was a VR demo for something called Kitchen. And people were like, well, this is Kitchen. Like, that was the tape that was, uh, there was something involved in the Kitchen demo. So this is that, but the full game. So what is it? Yeah, no one knew. It's just like, Seven? What the hell's Seven? What the fuck? <laughs> What a great way to reveal it. And you also have to understand that, like, Resident Evil 6 was, like, not good. It was not good. Resident Evil 6 was not good. And so they really, this was five years. Resident Evil 6 was 2012, I believe, or 2013. I don't remember. Um, so this is a good few years after that. People were really wondering, like, if they bring back the main series of Resident Evil, how are they going to do it? And so for them to come back and be like, it's not an action game. It's first person horror. It was such a clear sign that like, finally, finally, they get it. They get that Resident Evil is about horror, not action. Holy shit. This one in hindsight, this next one in hindsight hasn't aged super well, but it was still a very hype and exciting moment. Um, or a big video game that people were excited about. So I'm just gonna cut straight to the uh, the goodies. Wake the f up, samurai. We have a city to burn. Yeah. Just that of like actual Keanu Reeves in a, in our the video game that people were already excited to play, and then this. And then reading the interviews afterwards of like, he was so excited to do this. And he was like one of the best like on stage. Keanu, <laughs> Keanu Reeves. Like reading that he was like one of the most exciting on stage experiences he's ever had. It was such a fun moment. How's it going? <laughs> and even though Cyberpunk came out and it had problems, people still loved it. But you know, it wasn't exactly what people thought it was going to be. That didn't matter in this moment, because it was just a fun, wholesome moment. Like, the dude can't even talk because people are just so happy to see this man. Like, what a fun... Like, he's just a great guy. Like, you can tell he's just pumped to be... They felt genuine. It felt authentic and genuine, which I think is the most important thing for any E3 presenter, is it has to feel genuine. Project, Cyberpunk 2077. And I'm always drawn to fascinating stories. <laughs> so the way he says stories. Cyberpunk. Like, come on, he's just thrilled to be there. It's set in a metropolis of the future, where body modification has become an obsession. You play like you can tell he just he's feeding off the audience here so well in the sleazy underbelly of the city and I know he's an actor but it's something we yeah. need more of <laughs> okay but let me tell you the feeling of of being there of walking the streets of the future is really going to be breathtaking you're breathtaking, <laughs> you're, breathtaking. you're all that moment got memed a lot big time. It's unfortunate that the guy who said it like milked it big time, like probably still milks it big time on Twitter and YouTube, but fun cute moment. When there's uh when the release date. Oh man, oh shit. Oh no. All right. Then check this out. Oh my god. That also got the check this out. Oh my god. Awesome. And then Yeah, that 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 didn't age well. Cause even the date they push it to was probably too soon. Well definitely too soon. But like I said, like in the context of E3 and just good memories, who cares? You know, just a good ass time. Next up is a gameplay demo. What could that be? What could Bethesda have a demo of? 
Come on. It's doom. Open it up with a shotgun, a shoddy pump. Come the fuck on. It's fucking epic. But yeah. People were just so curious about this, because I believe they showed it at um, QuakeCon to a, a close, a behind closed doors audience. And this is the first time the general public was seeing this game. And it was like, all these things were here, it was like, you got chainsaws, there's double jumping, there's this, there's that, there's whatever. And this is our first time actually seeing for ourselves what the hell was going on with this game. And just glory kill right off the bat. And then, is this the leg twist? Yeah, it is. I've watched this demo too many times. <laughs> they just explode. Oh, the classic door noise. I just noticed that. Also, one thing I love about this demo is the audience reactions to everything. It feels like you're watching a gladiator match. Like, yes! Kill that demon! And yes. We... we were entertained. <clears throat> oh, this is the nice little... Boom! Over the edge. Weapon mods, yeah. Didn't really need to use the triple shot there, but sure, why not? Whoop, whoop. Love that. <laughs> That's such a good one. Oh, this is a... Oh, <laughs> The audience reaction, I love it. Oh! And I know I'm flexing, I have this voice thing, but this demo. Oh, this demo's just so fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Heavy assault rifle. So many squishy liquid sounds. Oh, yep, this is when we. Yeah. God, it would have been so fun to have been in this room when this was happening. And how it's unique animations for each enemy. Oh. So gross, but so cool. Oh, man. Some early Mick Gordon there, I wonder. In the background. The music, I mean. <laughs> it was just like a spinal cord with legs walking around. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't know why he switched the shotgun here, but maybe just for variety. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I love the audience reactions. Oh! Here we go. Three, what the two. fuck? Okay, so, add. It's so funny how the original Doom demo opened with the Doom Slayer getting killed by the Revenant, and now he's such like he's like the icon of invincibility. He's like the 
the physical manifestation of like literally too angry to die. So it's kind of interesting that that like maybe a little out of touch with their character there. Um, but again, it was the first of the the rebooted series, so you don't know, you know, like how characters take a life of their own until after. But damn. Okay, next up we got an old an oldie. It makes me feel old to say it's an oldie, even though I was a child when this happened, a literal child when this next one happened. But it makes me feel old to refer to something from 2004 as an oldie. This is a big one. Historically big one. Maybe not in terms of E3 moments, but just like industry moments. Well, the wait is over. This is Nintendo DS. Man, I hated the first model of the DS. The DS Lite was so much From better. From the time we announced its code name, you've known these initials to represent the most obvious feature, dual screens. But that's not what the initials stand for to us. DS has a much larger and more relevant meaning. DS, developer's system. In creating DS, we've given the world's most talented game. I also chose this moment not just because it's the reveal of the DS, but for a moment that coincided with the reveal of the DS. And of course, in the end, new enjoyment for all of us. The result is this. DS not only changes Nintendo, it changes our industry. It wasn't wrong. He was not wrong about Here's that. A brand new Metroid game. Yep, there it playing is. Playing on Nintendo DS. <laughs> the, oh my god! <laughs> In the background. Yeah. I think the reason people got so the hyped for these game announcements because, like, back in the day. Oh, tomorrow. But um. Oh, because E three. Um. Not like tomorrow consumers, but like, hey, when you show up on the f show floor, you'll be able to play this. But um. I think the reason why people got so hyped for game reveals back in the day was because like E3 conferences were so fucking boring. It was they would literally bring people on stage like analysts on stage and be like, here's how we're doing compared to the competition. As you can see, our hardware and software is selling. It's just like they're going over like sales figures. They don't do that anymore. So it's kind of hard to imagine a time when they didn't do that or when they did do stuff like that. Um, but that's why people got so fucking amped for these announcements. Cause like, holy shit, actual news. I give a shit about, <laughs> you know, something I can actually be excited about and play. Targeting and shooting now moves beyond buttons. This was Metroid Just prime hunters the where you want to fire. Metroid's missions have always oh, been the people, Oh my god, <laughs> in the background. It's so because good. all of your map positioning and weapons changes are done on the fly. It's just awesome. If you're looking for the future of gaming, look at the interface. But what if your friend is more than a few feet away? That font! <laughs> say, a few time zones away. No problem. You can hear the audience go... Nintendo DS Wi-Fi. Oh, man. Wi-Fi means you can connect via the net. It's beyond online. It's no line. In all, <laughs> this machine <laughs> truly is transformative. It changes how you connect to your game oh, man. and to each other. I can't even make fun of it because, like, the DS time. was huge. The release of Nintendo DS in both Japan and America this year. like this is what they hired reggie for oh man but i think we are most yep. proud of this man that original design i do like the black stripe down the middle though i mean it was a game boy advance with another screen on top there's like two Game Boy Advances attached. Nintendo DS. Is this when the revolution? I want you to know that Nintendo is working on our next system, and that system will create a gaming revolution. Yep. 
I suppose I mean, he wasn't wrong. Give you a list of our technical specs. I you wanna? They had some. But I won't for a simple reason. They really don't matter. <laughs> I mean, it's true. It's like who gives a shit? We're Nintendo. You're gonna buy it? Who gives a fuck? A time when horsepower alone made an important difference is over. Whoa. Thank you very much. I mean, he. He wasn't really, he's still right about that. Like he's, he's been gone for a long time, but he was still right about that. Like that was 2004 and he was right. He's like the age of horsepower is kind of over and it still is because it's like the switch is still like the best selling console on a monthly basis. And that is significantly weaker than its competition, especially now that the PS5 and series X are out. Mind you, you know, we're getting a, a remodel, uh, an updated model soon, but it's like the Switch didn't need to be as powerful as a PS5 to be as successful as a PS5. And so in that regard, Iwata was always right about the specs don't really matter. Is do you want to play it or not? That's what matters. And that's why Iwata is such a legend, is a legend, not was. Okay, next up is a trailer also. Next two things are from Sony E3 2016. Uh, we're starting off with a trailer and following it up with a demo. Um, probably guess what those are since I have not showed those yet. This was crazy. Uh, the reason I brought this trailer here was actually for a very specific reason. They're safer. It's not just because Spider-Man was an it's awesome game and what, that this was an insane announcement. That's why I brought it up. Insomniac. Probably for the best. Because Knowing before this, prior to this, Queens, the long-standing rumor was that Sucker Punch was working on a Spider-Man game. And I think that was born from just like, oh, Sony's working on a Spider-Man game. And I bet people just thought like, well, naturally that means Sucker Punch is working on it because they literally have made you know, three, four superhero games counting First Light, you know, in Infamous. And so they'd be the natural choice for Spider-Man. And so when that Insomniac logo showed up, their old logo, it was like, holy shit. We didn't even see that coming and it's perfect, you know? And it's crazy seeing this now and seeing what Insomniac Spider-Man has become since then. Like, oh, even the trailer was framey as hell. But yeah. It was just kind of like a holy, like, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, like, it was a very confusing moment for a variety of different reasons, but I think it's for the reason I just said, where, like, people suspected Sony was working on a Spider-Man game. They didn't know Insomniac was working on a Spider-Man game. So that was crazy. But that was the last new game announcement of the show. The first one was a doozy. And this was following months and months and months, if not years, of rumors of where this franchise was going. I like how these are press events that we still have people. So they, so they. It's like, how do these people get in here? <laughs> like, these guys got press credentials. That doesn't scare me. Oh, cool. Oh, no. All right, the greatest. Horizon. No. Boy. A lot of people thought this was Horizon at first. Like, oh, because it's like fantasy and whatever, but it's like snow. Your mother's knife. Wait. It belongs to you now. Wait. What for? A test. She taught you to hunt, yes? Yes, sir. Then show me what you know. Oh Tingles. Spots. It's a third person, like behind the shoulder. A very similar situation with Resident Evil, where it had been a few years since we had seen this series. And then it comes back in a brand new format we've never seen it in before. So it's like, holy shit, they wouldn't do this if they didn't have a friggin' reason. 
Again, I can't even imagine. I can't even begin to imagine the energy in this room right now. Magic. What are you doing? Now it's gone, it's up. You see the rage meter in the top left? That didn't really become a thing. When I tell you to fire. I'm sorry. And watching that Raising Kratos documentary, you learn that like this is a vertical slice that like they still didn't really have a big idea of what they actually wanted this game to be at this point. This was kind of just like this is an idea we've had we have. We're just throwing shit in there that we're working on, but we don't necessarily know if we're gonna continue. But this is just the general idea of what they're going for. Because there's other concepts in this that didn't make it in the final game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> yeah, come on. The hand to hand. I love people. I love the freakouts going on. I can't even imagine what it would like. Oh, this. Come on. But imagine being a dev at Sony Santa Monica and hearing this reaction. Oh, that would feel so good. Just hearing how goddamn hyped people are for every little thing Kratos does. <laughs> Just punches him! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I love how everyone reacts to every little thing that happens. It's so fun. Again, like I said, like the energy in this room. Everyone is just so thrilled. Like this is what E3 is about. And this is why it's sad that Sony pulled out of E3. Cause it's like, we'll have to find these moments in different places. Like. We can find these moments in different places, but we want them with you, Sony. Like, we want them with games like this. Yeah, Spartan Rage. Like, this is still the same Kratos. <laughs> Do it! <laughs> Just punching him. This is a great sequence. Pulls out the arrow. And it's like, let's just keep it going! Keep it going. Yeah, people are just like, yes, show me more of this game, please. Thank you. See, like this, this mechanic right here. Like, area discovered and. <laughs> Dude, Monty discovered? <laughs> and you froze when I told to kill it. Open world! <laughs> this is insane! Like, yeah. Everyone felt that way. Oh man, just complete change of pace and tone. But so good. But yeah, right here coming up. Um, yeah, knowledge gained, archery 50. That never made it in. So that was an idea they had that never... So like I said, it's like, they were still figuring out what the hell this game was at this point in time. 
So they were just kind of throwing shit at the wall and seeing what stuck. Your life. But they had a general idea, obviously, because the camera stayed. This whole sequence, Finish not the same way, it. but it stayed. Oh, and the live orchestra! Oh man, this E3 was such a banger. Oh, what a touching moment, dude. I cry like every time. <laughs> come on, dude. Oh, it's like, come on! <laughs> like, just have this moment together. Like, this is like a bonding moment for the audience. Like, this is sends beyond an E3 demo. This is a bonding experience. <laughs> yeah, what a great character moment. Like, already giving us story, too. Like, major character no, development in the E3 demo. Fight a dragon. Just, just God of War, you know? Holy shit. Man, what a. Oh, man. I know it's kind of weird for me to just go straight from clip to clip, but it's like, what is there to say? You know how it is. You know what the fuck is up. Let's just keep it, keep it rolling. Don't stop. Don't stop. Another one. Another And I know we haven't seen it since. This could be the year. It's been a long time. They canceled it and started over. That was a couple of years ago. So I think it's time. If not this year, the next year. <laughs> and that's all you're getting. But that was enough to just be like, holy shit, it's not just a new Metroid game. It's Metroid Prime 4. Because there was a there's a real debate going on at this time. It's like, does Nintendo even give a shit about Metroid? Like, are they even going to do anything with it? And so for them to come back with just like, we're not just making a new Metroid game. We're making Metroid Prime. You know, that was, oh. oh. And again, like, there's not much to say about it because it's like, we haven't seen it since. But who cares? <laughs> it's out there somewhere. This next one's a pretty fun one. Oh, yeah. This was Smash for Wii U. And this is the reveal that you could make me characters. But it was still just I remember watching this and being like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> it's Reggie from Nintendo. Oh my god. Like, what a fun, stupid ad. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, my God. I wish I... Imagine being on the set when they were filming this. <laughs> the stances! And the faces. <laughs> faces are so good. Yeah. Very goofy and fun moment. Like, it's moments like these that make me like, I understand why Nintendo does directs, but imagine this in a conference room full of other people. It'd be so fun. Oh shit! Whipping up the amiibo! You're fucked now, Reggie. <laughs> Mario. <laughs> yeah, 
Damn. They just killed Reggie. Yeah, that's a fun one. Like, there's nothing really much to say about it. It's just a fun one. Just a fun ass. Like, again, like, I feel kind of bad that I'm not really presenting, like, a ton of great color commentary or context for some of these clips. But some of them are just like, bro, I'm just here for the hype. I'm just here to spread some jolly hype um, and share it with all of you. This next one, though, a bit somber, but it was a huge moment in games featuring someone who was on this playlist earlier. Not them, them not they themselves, but one of their projects. And it's, it's a long trailer. I don't think I'm thinking I'm going to cut up around it and cut here and there. I don't think I'm going to walk you through the whole thing. But this was a moment. This was a big moment because this was on Xbox's stage. This was a PlayStation franchise demoing their game on the Xbox stage. What? So, yeah. Yeah. We pull in money. Recruits. Subtitles. No, we, don't need we don't need those here. Rubbing our noses in I mean, maybe we do, but... Dirt. All for revenge. Also, I have no idea if I'm going to get DMCA'd for this. And this game, this trailer shows a lot of cut content. There's some stuff that's, like, conceptually still in the main game, like this part. But, like, this scene is not in the game. Just to suffer. Classic line. And this was ground. This is ground zeroes right here. I can feel my leg. Like I know people rag on this game for one reason or the other. The story is whatever. It's not finished. But I don't give a shit. I love this game. It's just a fun ass game. Yeah, here we go. It's not just them. The whole world wants you dead. Yeah, man. Wow. This game was insanely pretty when this was shown. You're a legend in the eyes. Like by 2013 standards, this was like space age. This was like the first Fox Engine game. That's how cars would want it. Now go. Let the legend come back to life. Oh man. What a moment. Oh man, and yep, just that's crazy. Like by trailer standards, that's crazy. Just like, alright, here you go. MGS. I love the 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 inner the the lower thirds in this. Oh man, this was crazy. Kojima has stated apparently this was always the end goal for Metal Gear Solid was something like this, where it's just like a stealth sandbox. Not necessarily an open world game, because open world games didn't exist when he started, but like... The idea of really forming your own path. Like driving in a Metal Gear game. Holy shit. <laughs> like, this is the shit I love in Metal Gear Solid 5, where it's like... Scoping shit out, finding a path in... Forming a plan. I made a whole video, two videos, because this trailer was so epic. Like my most viewed videos on this channel, because this trailer fucked me up so bad in a good way. <laughs> The animation and fluidity of the movement was so crazy, too. Yeah, that was crazy. The dive. <laughs> the CQC in 5 is awesome. Cause it's me. The animations are so sick. Snake. It took you so long. People knew right off the bat this was probably liquid. Ah. 
Good and not good villain. Underutilized, I'd say, but it's a product of the game. Just Konami being like, nope, wrap it up, bud. Like, ah, okay. I think the overall message of this game is really cool. Again, no idea if I'm going to get DMC8 or flag for this. So epic. <laughs> so epic. Here's me choking out Chico. The world calls for wet work, and we answer. Oh shit. No greater good. No just cause. Snake is a bad guy now. He kills children. So epic, dude! Holy shit! Fuck! That is why I included this on this list. <laughs> Holy shit! Take back everything that we've lost. Cause I'm already a demon. God damn. <laughs> no idea if the mic's gonna pick that up, but... 10 out of 10 trailer. Oh my god. That shit is leg- That is a legendary trailer. That is legitimately like one of the best trailers ever. And it is like 90% due to the music. <laughs> it's just like... That is the most epic shit. That is the most epic shit ever. Oh my god. But you know it's more epic than that. Uh, not not the next clip, but it's close. It's close. This was also from E3 2013. Uh it's the clip from E3 2013. The clip. <laughs> new titles on PlayStation 4. We're equally focused on this shit. Gamers oh man, I remember like Without friends a, calling me after this. Be like, you see that shit? <laughs> it's so good. For instance, PlayStation this I mean, not. won't impose any new restrictions. I think. I think it's fair to be just like, okay, context. Going into this, Xbox had pretty much confirmed that like they were going to implement DRM on the Xbox One, which meant um, online authentication required for games you owned, um, and used game sales would pretty much be useless on Xbox. I forget what the actual semantics. I did a whole podcast series about it. So if you really want to know, you can listen to those that podcast episode. It's the final one in uh, RAM. But all you really need to know is that Microsoft was really messing up big time going into this. And so what Sony did was pretty much just go, oh, let's just do everything they're not doing. Instance, and it PlayStation 4 exactly what they needed to do. Any new restrictions on the use of PS4 like their entire strategy was like, yeah, everyone hates this thing Xbox is doing. Let's not do that. And people just num 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 ate, it, ate it the fuck up, including me. Oh. oh, that's not my mouse. That's uh, that's Eurogamer's fault. Guess that's a good thing. We believe in the model that people embrace today with PlayStation 3 and continue to demand. Just heard you there. When a gamer buys <laughs> yeah. a PS4 disc, first hand feedback. Right yes, people want this. The game. They can trade in the game at retail, sell it to another person, lend it to a friend. And that awesome and video of Shuhei Yoshida and Adam Boys, like how to lend games to friends on PS4. Thanks. So good. The, they adopted the PR structure of just don't do what Xbox is doing right now. And that's why PlayStation 
had the upper hand going into this generation. Just the, the public image was so much more positive. In addition, PlayStation 4 disc based games don't need to be connected online to play. No DRM. It was just such a slam dunk. It was exactly what, because people were curious, like, well, if Xbox is doing, if, you enjoy if Xbox is doing it, then is PlayStation doing it? And then just being like, no, that's stupid. Why would we do that? It was such a, oh, so reassuring. It's like, thank you. The era, like, the gaming is not dead. Yeah, that was a direct. This whole thing is just a direct assault on Xbox. But yeah, and then later, of course, this happened, where they actually announced the, the price of the damn thing. That PlayStation 4 will be available at $399. Because the Xbox was 500 And so people are like, well, shit. Because the PS3 launched at 600 So people are like, no one knows what the fuck Sony's going to do. And so the fact that they came out with this hardware that was better and cheaper was fucking insane. That PlayStation 4 will be available at $399. Like, this was a you maniacs, you're crazy, I love you moment. People are like, holy shit, I'm actually going to be able to afford this thing. And it was like already proven that like the hardware was more powerful than the Xbox One. So it was like, yeah. Why the, it was like... It was just a green light, like, why the hell would I get an Xbox? And so every PlayStation fan was justified in their excitement for the brand in this moment. So that was one of the most, that was probably the hypest moment I've ever had watching E3 live. Because like I said, that was a moment, like, my friends were literally calling me up and be like, holy shit, I cannot believe that just happened. They just ate Xbox's lunch. Um, but. Uh, for a lot of people, the next clip and last clip on my list is the most hype E3 moment in history. And I can't exactly disagree. So, yeah. I hope you all enjoyed our program this morning. But before you leave, I'd like you to step inside one more world for Nintendo Game. This is after years of Zelda's turning into a game for kids. It's too cartoony. And then Nintendo's like, Huh? Heard you were talking shit! Yeah, man. This is a Zelda for adults. Damn. Come on with that. And then the man himself. Like, come on. I do not you. In order to grow, we must not stand still. And neither can I. So, thank you. God damn. <laughs> Oh my god, dude. And yeah, that's... It honestly doesn't get much better than that. Like, a brand new Zelda game being revealed that's literally exactly what people were begging for. And they had no idea it was even coming. 
and it wouldn't show up for another two years. It wouldn't come out for another two years. But just that moment of like, that was an unironic thank you Nintendo moment. And you don't have a lot of those. Um, but when they happen, they're so sweet. As much as Sony murdered it in e at E3 2016, you still can't top Nintendo at their best. And that's why I'm excited for this year's E3, because Sony's showing up in a very minor way. It's not even technically E3. They're showing up at Summer Game Fest and as a partner, so we don't even know if like, they're actually going to have anything crazy to show. Nintendo has a bold direct planned and a new Zelda game on the way. We still don't know the title of. Still have lots of crazy moments ahead of us, but uh, thank you for joining me on this trip down memory lane. I hope that it made you as excited for this year's E3. Video games, it just reminds me, it's not even like, looking at these doesn't even make me excited for this year's E3. It just makes me excited for video games in general. It just makes me appreciate games more. And like I said, I know it's just a bunch of advertisements being thrown at your face, but there's some magic about it. It's in the middle of the summer. It's, you know, it's video games, baby. And there's just something different about it. There's just, it doesn't feel like advertisement. It, um, it's all worth it for those genuine moments of excitement that you feel in as much as the people on stage feel. And that's what makes E3 special. And even though the future is uncertain, we'll always have these. So yeah, that's it. So Thanks for watching and enjoy E3. Have a good one. Bye.